exact. <laughs> Welcome, folks, to the Grizzle Geek Podcast. I'm Mike. I'm Doug. And we're here with you on a Friday night, ready to talk about some nerd stuff. And man, we've right. got a ton of nerd stuff to talk to you about today. Disney uh, Star Wars. <laughs> Disney, Star- <laughs> Disney Star Wars. Marvel. Yeah, uh, holy cow. Man, lots of crazy stuff. We're going to get into all that. We're going to break it all down for you. We're going to tell you what it means. Don't worry. We're here for you, folks. We got you. <laughs> Uh, we are the Grizzle Geek Podcast, guys. We are Arizona's premier nerd podcast on a Friday night. That's us, the Grizzle Geek. Welcome. Uh, we want to thank all of our listeners out there in podcast land who wait the weekend to listen to us on uh, Stitcher or Deezer or iTunes or wherever they get their podcasts. We're not picky. We don't. We're not going to shame anybody for listening on Deezer. <laughs> Wherever they, I feel wherever like I need, to, I need a new nickname like um, Foxtrot Oscar or something to go along with Charlie Tango out That's there. That's true. That's right. <laughs> Welcome, Charlie Tango. <laughs> you there. Uh, Rye, how you doing, Rye? Welcome. Uh, yeah. Guys, Flying we got... the Future Force? <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Uh, wow. Man. I had a long day at work. I just I literally got off work. Less than a half hour ago. How about you, Doug? How was your week? It was good. Yeah, uh, I actually took a vacation day on Wednesday. So mm-hmm. uh, Melissa was on vacation the whole week. So you know, it was kind of relaxing. And it's You're- this is our slow period now. We've we've passed our our deadlines. So mm-hmm. now it's for the next few weeks until we get ramped back up. It's kind of slow at work. Nice. So it's nice. You ever get the feeling that uh, Kirsten, when she's not here, we're kind of we suck at this weekly wrap up because we don't do anything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she's young; have... she actually goes out and does stuff. We're just kind of yeah. like, uh, no, she doesn't do go this? out now, really. Well, but... true, but <laughs> um, they did a, release a new um, patch for Swotor, so I was playing that. Although it had a lot of bugs, so nice. It came out the day I was on vacation, but it wasn't ready until like one or two o'clock in the afternoon for <laughs> to play <laughs> was there anything new anything good yeah they um they finish up the storyline with the you know like um with uh kira and what's his name um dang it i can't Sith remember guy? scourge yeah scourge Scourge. yeah scourge um so they finish up that storyline, and then there's a like a Mandalorian flashpoint that's about Shea Vizsla and being Mandalore and whatnot. Nice. Yeah, so it was. It's pretty cool. Uh, I actually started playing new characters on the European server because that was the only server I didn't have char- characters <laughs> on, so that I have, <clears throat> you know, I don't have the whole tricked out legacy with all of the perks and stuff like that. So just kind of uh, playing old school. Sadly, I have characters on every server because back in the day remember you used to get those coins for you get cartel coins cartel, for... <laughs> cartel coins for making characters on different servers so i went one made one on all of them max out those cartel coins back yeah. when i played sword War all the time uh all right there we go kirsten as you guys noticed or not is not with us tonight she's holidays she's got holiday stuff going on she actually has friends friends of wedding friends wedding or something right i think I that's, that was that's saturday Oh, okay. She's got a yeah, friend's, wedding. friends' wedding on Saturday today. She has, she's actually meeting up with some friends. So, they're mm. young. They can risk COVID. <laughs> we're old. We're gonna die. If we get COVID. We're gonna, we gotta yeah. hide. We gotta bunker down. Yeah, but not vitamins. quite old enough to to get in the first wave. So. No. Yeah. <laughs> True. You uh, might get into the second wave, but I pretty much have to wait till April to get. Yeah, in. you're 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 maybe June. See when you get. Yeah. You're gonna miss Black Widow if you don't. Uh, you got to suit up to go see Black Widow. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, they the government just bought a hundred million new uh, more doses of the Moderna vaccine, so it might go a little smoother in the late rounds. We'll see. We'll see how many people take it. I'm hearing from a lot of people like I'm not taking that. And I'm like, really? Okay. Fair enough. All right. I'm gonna be. Uh, I guess what would be kind of controversial, but it's not really, is if you're not going to take the vaccine for reasons other than you have a history of allergic reactions or 
I forget what the other underlying condition they're like, you know, wait. But if it's for any other reason, you're an idiot. <laughs> and go ahead and unsubscribe or whatever if you're if you fall in that boat because I really don't want to associate with you. Like we lose half our subscribers. Like, oh, <laughs> I didn't realize we had so many anti-vax fans. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Uh, okay, so jumping into it today, guys. Yeah, there's a we, lot, so we've probably... We have a ton going. of stuff to get to, and in fact, sadly, this is probably Doug's favorite episode because we don't have any <laughs> nerd nuggets. There's no small stories today, guys. Uh, yeah. They're all, you know... They're all lumped into the big stories. Giant, meaty chunks. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about Spider-Man 3, shall we? Sure. Doug, you excited about Spider-Man 3? Uh, yeah, yeah. Cautiously optimistic. Cautiously optimistic, because this thing is getting. I'm, yeah, that here's crazy. what I would have. If you had asked me that three, four weeks ago, I would. Of course, I'm excited about Spider-Man three. But the more they start jamming things into, I'm like, uh, is this going to be like the last Spider-Man three where you went too overboard? Um. Well, if they can jam as many characters as they can, as they can into an Avengers movie, or even. A non Avengers movie like uh, Captain America: Civil War had a ton of yeah. characters in there. Although, I mean, those were all previously built up, so we're going to have to rely on. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Let's get into the news. Yeah. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Okay. So after months of rumors about Spider Verse, right? Crazy casting rumors, right? Some of them are actually have been confirmed this week. All right. So before mm-hmm. this week, we knew that Doctor Strange was going to be in it, right? Benedict Cumberbatch is going to reprise his role as Doctor Strange. He is going to serve as kind of like the mentor figure. And we've heard that Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness was going to be... <coughs> lead straight me, into this movie. Lead straight into this movie. Mm-hmm. And it's going to touch on WandaVision and and Spider-Man 3. Right? It's going to be like the in-between movie. Um, <clears throat> so, we knew that was happening. And then we got the crazy news that Jamie Foxx was going to reprise his role as Electro. Now, if you guys remember, Jamie Foxx played Electro in the uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2, was it? Uh, Yeah. Jamie Foxx? Is that what you were saying? Yeah. 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 Sorry, I was reading Charlie Tango's comments. Oh, did you say something good? Um, (laughs) He was talking about how many characters were in the uh, Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse. Yeah, true. They had a ton there. They 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 did. they didn't. If they do it like that, where they didn't have to go into the backstory of all of them, right? They focused on two characters, right? Miles and Peter, and then the rest were kind of like there. They were in there. They had good moments, but they weren't. They didn't get into the. We didn't get the you know noir Spider Man's backstory or Spider Ham's. They were just there. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So we got that bizarre news. We're like, wow, what is going to happen with this movie? And so <clears throat> everyone speculated, oh, he's going to be playing a new version of Electro. They're just getting the same actor, that kind of thing, kind of like they did with J Jonah Jameson, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> well, now this week we got confirmation of some crazy stuff, right? Like. They've been speculating that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are going to reprise their roles as their respected spider man in their various spider man universes in to create kind of a Spider-Verse movie. Well, we got confirmed that Kirsten Dunst was coming back as Mary Jane. She's from the original Raimi right. Spider-Man trilogy. Right. Uh, Alfred Molina, also from the original trilogy, is coming back as Doc Ock from probably one of the best Spider-Man movies, if not the best Spider-Man movie out of all of them, Spider-Man 2. Um, and then the big news, Andrew Garfield was confirmed to come back reprising the Spider-Man role from The Amazing Spider-Man. So I gotta ask, with these three, we already have two people confirmed from the Raimi Spider-Man movie, and we got Andrew Garfield from The Amazing Spider-Man movie, Doug. Mm-hmm. Is Tobey Maguire coming back? I mean, that's pretty much a... I figure a done deal at this point, right? Just working yeah, it out. Yeah, I mean, you would assume, but it is still possible that you're just going to get pe- bits and pieces from the various universes. Why would Mary Jane? Through. Why would Kristen Dunst come back? Why would you have her instead of and not Tobey Maguire? I, I mean, I'm not in on the writing the story, so I'm not sure. I, I would assume that if you were going that route, that yeah, you probably would have. Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield so that you had three yeah. different Spider-Man in their respective universes clashing. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, we, I mean, we're, it was all confirmed at, you know, um, Kevin Feige basically said WandaVision leads into mm-hmm. um, universe, or in the uh, 
what is it, Multiverse of Madness, which leads into Spider-Man 3. He said yep. it leads into Spider-Man 3. Yep. Um, so there's the, definitely this... going to be some multiverse hijinks that are happening here. So yeah, it'd be great to see all three of yeah. the Spider-Man we've had so far. I'm going on a limb. I'm saying they haven't announced it yet because the ink's not dry on the paper yet, right? They're still, probably still yeah. negotiating. Tobey Maguire's yeah, going to be in this movie. You gotta, yeah, you got to convince him. And I haven't seen Tobey Maguire lately. Is hopefully he's in the shape. Weight. I was going to say, hopefully he's in the shape. Maybe That's he perfect, be, man. He can play the fat the over <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's got his... Uh, oh, maybe maybe we get a scene where uh, Mary Jane leaves him. Oh! <laughs> totally, oh, mirror, oh, oh. <laughs> totally mirror the freaking... Oh, no. So, yeah. <clears throat> Tony McGuire. There's also some reports, and like, and Charlie Tango said it in the chat there, Emma Stone is Gwen Stacy. There is... Uh, the big rumor that she's coming back is Gwen Stacy, right? Possibly Spider Gwen, right? Oh. There's a, and there's also talk of a possible spinoff series, Spider Gwen spinoff series, starring her. Oh, interesting. So okay. we'll see what happens there. Uh, and even stranger, there's another rumor, and there's normally, I wouldn't even report on this rumor because I'm like, okay, this is a goofy rumor. Although it's come from a couple credible sources, right? And it's mm -hmm. come from the same source that broke the news about Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire months ago, right? And they're saying that Charlie Cox was going to reprise his role as Daredevil from the Netflix series in the Spider-Man 3 movie. That'd be cool. Um, like, and wow. <laughs> That's all I got to say is wow. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Let's get them all. If, we're, if they're going to do Spider-Verse, let's do Spider-Verse, right? Yeah. And if they're going to do Spider-Verse... Are they hiding Miles Morales? Are they keeping that a secret? Is it, you know? Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, no. If I mean, if you're gonna go this route, and let's 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 go full in, you know, <laughs> uh, conspiracy theory here. So, yeah. if this were in the cards and you were Sony, yeah. You would want this to come to play out so that you get Miles Morales in the end. Yeah. So you could set this up with all of these things going on in the MCU. And then you, as a Sony, have a Spider Gwen spinoff. And you have, well, before that, you have a live, essentially a live action Spider Verse movie yeah. where you bring. You know, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield back together again, maybe even um, have you know, our current Spider-Man come in and move into that universe and introduce Miles Morales that way into a Sony movie that's not, you know, it's not the MCU, but it's tied to this whole shebang that's going on in Spider-Man 3. And right. then you come out of it with all of those go back to their normal universes. Now in the Sony-verse, you have your Miles Morales Spider-Man. Right, and then and that makes to, it makes it's a way, way to bring, better Spider Verse. Everybody's to bring Charlie Cox in to the Marvel yeah. MCU without having to acknowledge all the stuff that happened in the Netflix series. Yeah. So if they want to recast them, certain things, yeah, then they can. Yeah, I oh, I think that's amazing. If they bring Charlie Cox in, come on, they got to bring back D'Onofrio as Kingpin because one, yeah. he's the perfect Kingpin. Two, he wants to do it badly. Right. The only reason why you yeah. would recast that is if. He wasn't interested in the role anymore, right? Right. But he really wants to do it. He really likes it. So, and he's great at it. So, yeah. I mean, physically, he's the kingpin. So, yeah, there's a lot from that. I, I mean, I wish they'd keep them all and bring them in. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do a total new Avengers with everybody in there. Yeah. But they're not going to. So, they're not going to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mike Coulter's moved on. He's got a whole other series now. So, yeah. we're not going to get him back, you know. Uh, it's Luke Cage, which is sad. I mean, all right, I got to say, I want Punisher the most out of all of them. He was the next most appropriate to yeah. who, you know, the character. Daredevil. Actually, if I had to pick who I'd definitely want, it'd be Kingpin, Daredevil, and then Punisher. <laughs> right? I don't want them all. Don't get me wrong. There's none of them yeah. that I'd say, nah, I'd recast. Maybe, maybe Iron yeah, Fist. Uh, and, <laughs> yeah, well, but, poor Iron Fist. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> just they, they at the end of season two at Iron Fist, they actually promised something exciting. You know, yeah, something I was like, good. Oh, you're canceling it now? What? Oh man, I just got. I finally, after two seasons, finally got excited for it. Nah, <laughs> all right. Oh well. Yeah. So, all right, man. So, what is the over under on <clears throat> on the Miles Morales? If you do you want to, if you had to pick, what do you think? Were you a betting man? Would you bet for him? If Did he show up, um, I would give it very long shot odds in the movie proper. But as but a cameo, I could see a, not even as a cameo, as a mid or post credit scene. Mm, okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Probably a post credit scene, so you could specify that it was going to be in a Sony movie. Yeah. So this was the big Marvel news early on in the week, right? All the Spider-Man news had dropped. Yeah. <laughs> Until Thursday, till yesterday, when Disney had its investor meeting, and holy, a ton. What so a like, info almost, dump. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I think we uh, should break this down, Doug, into some chunks here. Yeah. So um, I got to start this. Do you, um, do you follow uh, Campia on Twitter? Not on Twitter, no. I okay. watch them every once in a while on YouTube. <laughs> I had kind of an off-color post where he's all like, this investor meeting was Disney pulling out its penis and slapping Netflix and uh, <laughs> HBO Max across the face. <laughs> Take that. Check this out. Yeah. And Dude. at the same time, not not alienating uh, movie theater uh, completely. So, like, they did it the right way. But we'll see. We'll get into it here. All you right, wanna, so I'll take this first part Star through Wars? Star Wars, and then you okay. can pick up with Marvel there. So, okay. all right. right so, some just general background stuff. Bob Iger has confirmed that he is going to finally step down, um, I guess, around January 1, now that the uh, um, COVID response is kind of finalized, and, you know, Disney knows what they're doing, I think, at this point. So, he's going to go into retirement, and we'll see if he moves into politics from this. But... Um, <laughs> The major focus of the Disney investor meeting was on Disney Plus, where you know we figured it was going to be. Eighty of the one hundred projects announced were for the streaming service. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that was you know, Disney Plus announced uh, ten Star Wars series, ten Marvel series, and fifteen live action Pixar and animated series. So. There's a lot coming. Yeah. <laughs> so let's dive into the Star Wars. And 15 Pixar animated movies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So tw 15 of those 20 things going to theaters are Pixar and. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. And animated um, movies. Well, yeah, because the. And I'm sure more will be to come. This is what they have on their slate because there was only one. Well, we'll get into this here. So um, <laughs> Star Wars, we've got. Two Mandalorian spinoffs. Um, funny enough, not a Boba Fett one, but we've got a Rangers of the New Republic. So which, Boba Fett you, doesn't doesn't die in this well, last, next two. I haven't seen this one yet, but the next yeah. two episodes. He if he doesn't be, die, he, he, he might be in, in one of these two. Yeah, because you know, Cara Dune's in this one. In that one, most likely, yeah. And Rangers most of the New Republic captain that they've been um, that X wing captain who's been yeah. going around. He is likely to be in it as well. I don't think we know anything else about it. Even yeah. what it is, other than it's set in the time same time frame, yeah. And then obviously, Ahsoka is getting a spinoff because um, yeah. you don't cast Rosario Dawson to play one episode of Mandalorian. <laughs> so, of one of the most popular Star Wars characters yeah. going right now, yeah. Yeah. So, those are pretty obvious ones. Um, so we'll see what happens with Boba Fett. But we've also got two animated series uh, announced: The Bad Batch, which they're their preview actually made me excited for this one. The little teaser uh, sizzler they got for it yeah, um, looked super cool. So I was, the Bad Batch was kind of like, oh, all right, they're cool. They, it is confirmed, Echo is now part of the Bad Batch. So there's oh, a nice. five member team instead of a four member team. Um, and it looks cool. What you get from the teaser is it looks like at first they're helping everybody hunt down Jedi. And then at some point they turn and turn against the empire it looks like from the from the uh from what we get in the teaser trailer so i'm pretty excited to see how that goes and then the weird one is although i'm more on board now that i've read a little more about it is star wars visions 
It's going to be ten shorts, so they're not exactly episodes. Um, they, they're going to be a little longer. Series? It's an anthology. There's no, yeah. it's no running through story, and it'll be multiple creators, and they're all Japanese anime creators. Ooh, they're nice. going to be doing the stories. So at first, I was kind of like, eh, I because I'm having bad thoughts of um, that stupid uh, show, the cartoon that followed um, Resistance. I think it was called. That mm-hmm. followed um, the Rebels. Rebels, and I was like, "This looks stupid. I'm not, you know, I'm not interested." <laughs> but this sounds a little more interesting, so I'm pretty excited about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Obi Wan Kenobi again; it's already been confirmed, but it is now confirmed that Hayden Christensen will return as Anakin slash Darth Vader. That's exciting. So we're going to get that. Now I think I'm not sure if the time frame was confirmed before, but we now know it's ten years after episode three. Um, so, you know, there's highly likely we're going to have a 10 year old Luke Skywalker in at least some of the episodes. Yeah. Cassie Nandor is coming to Disney plus and I watched the teaser for that and I'm far more excited about it now. Yeah, actually that, that, that teaser sold me on that show. Cause yeah. I was before I was kind of like, he's a cool character and I love Rogue really One. Yeah. But do we <laughs> but need the series? <laughs> But yeah, that, that teaser yeah. sold me. He yep. did his job. So pretty excited about that one. And the next three, we have very little information about. The Acolyte is um, a series set in the High Republic. And High I'm not, Republic. I'm not positive. Was this an animated series or going to be live action? I don't know. I'm not going to watch it. So <laughs> um, I'm not excited no. about High Republic. I'm just. I'm sorry. It's just that's not a series period that actually excites me the if it was old republic i'd be all over it yeah except for there's um i heard some interesting <laughs> ideas See, charlie tango knows the <laughs> acolyte could reference the acolytes of the beyond which have kind of you know shown up in aftermath and some of the other stuff and they say it's set at the end of the high republic so there's a lot of speculation that this could show the emergence of plagueis yeah in it could show up at some point in this show, which would be interesting to see how the how the Sith come back into it and how the Jedi start falling. I'd still so, prefer an old Republic show. Oh well, yeah, I would too. But, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Yeah, uh, we got Star Wars Lando. Um, well, again, no. Is this, yeah, we don't know if this is gonna be animated or whether it's actually gonna be live action with the uh, yeah. Um, Josh what I me. what I'm hoping is, and I I have to give credit to, well, I got it from Eckhart's Ladder. I yeah. don't know if he got it from somebody else. The idea that what if this is a show that Billy D. Williams narrates, and Ooh. Donald Glover plays Lando, oh. and you've oh. got this idea of an unreliable narrator, like did this did this really happen or not? You know, maybe uh, Lando's uh, bo- boasting about his adventures, and they come off really like, like old Lando I'm awesome. stories. Yeah, so, uh, I would Donald love it if that, but that, that would be we'll amazing. See. Yeah, uh, so that's that a cool idea. I hope they're going that direction. But mm-hmm. and then lastly, we got probably the most kid-friendly of the shows, a droid story, Star Wars: A Droid Story, which has R two D two and C three PO teaming up with a new hero. Um unclear whether that hero is a droid or somebody else. So but, flashback and, to their time on Endor with the, the Ewoks during the... <laughs> no idea. Um, I would guess that this is probably a... probably in between time, maybe with, you know, in, in the New Republic time frame, although it could be after Episode 9. Yeah. Uh, so far, nothing else in this really screams post episode nine. So it's it's likely that all of this is kind of happening before the sequel trilogy. Hmm. But that's it. That's what we got. Uh, Star Wars wise for yeah. Star Wars series. There's more news coming up later. Correct. All right, so let's jump into the Marvel series. All right, let's talk a bit about Marvel. So. Uh, we knew WandaVision, Falcon, and Winter Soldier, Loki, right? We knew about them. Now, But now we got a release date for uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, March 19th, which, strangely enough, is going to be before Black Widow. Right? Interesting. 
Yeah. So, um, but so we'll see how that how that works out. There's gonna be any kind of weird spoiler situation or whatnot. But so the art it's gonna premiere March March nineteenth, which is exciting. Uh, we got to see an awesome trailer for Loki, right? Which looks awesome. We, look, we saw a full trailer for Falcon Winter Soldier too, and One Division and One Division them, and they all right. looked they really all look good. good. Yeah. yeah. Then we knew about Hawkeye, What If, and Moon Knight, right? We knew those were being announced. Those before the meeting, those were announced, and Miss Marvel and She Hulk, and we actually saw production footage of Miss Marvel, so we know that's being worked on right now. Uh, Hawkeye, we recently just got. Uh, cool product shots of that, so we got to see you know <laughs> all kinds. We got to see the dog. We got to see uh, Kate Bishop in her uh, comic accurate purple outfit, so that was exciting. Um, Moon Knight, we've heard all kinds of speculation about. We know that's starting soon, so we got all that. So we got for confirmations and all that, which is good. But then the new stuff we heard about um, Ironheart. Right, and we've got a star yeah. set to star Dominic Thorne as the engineering protege Riri Williams. Right, so the successor to Iron Man, to Tony Stark. Uh, then we also, and the one I least expected, but I'm kind of pretty excited about, just because it's uh, it's Armor Wars, right, which examines one of Tony Stark's biggest fears. If you ever read back in the comics, it was Armor Wars was that 80s or that was 80s, right? Armor mm-hmm. Wars. Yeah, or early nineties. Early nineties, I can't remember. Uh, Armor's Wars was this was a run in Iron Man comics where he was trying to regather up all his technology that escaped. Right, his armor technology escaped, and he, they had all these like you know Titanium Man and Crimson Dynamo and all these other armored suit bad guys were based mm-hmm. on his technology, and he was trying to right. get them all back. So that's uh, going to be with the, the story, but it's not going to have. It's, obviously, we don't have Tony Stark. So it's going to star Don Cheadle reprising his role as Rhodey, right? So nice. it's going to be Armor Wars with War Machine instead War of Iron Machine. Man. Yeah. And, uh, which he was part of Armor Wars, the, the comics run. Yeah. So. Yeah, he was. Now, was Ironheart, was it announced? Because I didn't get that far in the Marvel panel. Mm-hmm. Is it going to be its own show or, uh, yeah, or is it going to be in Armor Wars? Okay. It's going to be part of, it's going to be its own show. Ironheart's okay. own show, Armor Wars' own show. Then okay. we have another show, Secret Invasion. Uh, previously rumored Nick Fury-led series is, was confirmed with Samuel L. Jackson uh, reprising his role as Nick Fury, the S.H.I.E.L.D. director, alongside Ben Mendelsohn as uh, Talos, the Skrull. So, nice. of course they'd have to have the Skrull because it's Secret, Secret Invasion. invasion. <laughs> yeah. So I wonder how that's going to work out. So we're getting Secret Invasion, but not on a big epic Avengers level, right? Obviously it's who who knows? Here's what they said. And at said. least it's, some of the troll being good guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's let's put it this way. What they said about this is just because, unlike before when it was TV, right? They couldn't get like big people to be on Agents of Shield because it was TV. TV. TV, right? Marvel treats this no different. It's just the only difference between a production of a TV show and a production of a movie is the length. Kevin Feige said, "Look, there's no difference, right?" No difference in contracts, pay, you know, uh, the amount of production that goes into it. The only difference is going to be the amount of time that this is, right? So instead of a two-hour movie, it'll be, you know, hour-long show or whatever right. it is, right? So, and that, they basically, point, there's no difference in quality, quality difference. This is it. The Marvel, a Marvel movie and a Marvel TV show are the same now, pretty much. That's cool. Yeah, which is great. And you could tell because they got Ben Mendelsohn, right, in <laughs> to put on for spending makeup for a TV series. So that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then this is not part of the one of the series, but this is other that came out at the same time of the other the TV series news came out was Marvel Studios working on a new Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special for Disney Plus. Unfortunately, uh, it's for next year. It's for next year. It's not for this year. It's for next year. But... Uh, it'll be directed by James Gunn. So it's going to be a live action, not just a, it's oh, not no. an animated. What? It's, did you mean in 2022? Not 21? Uh, no, it's going to be it's going to be for 2022. Because oh, Guardians so of Galaxy is not. Yeah, Guardians of Galaxy is not coming out until 2022. Ah, so, right, so we got two years to wait. Two for years a holiday to wait. Special yeah, not next Christmas. The Christmas after. But it's a live action holiday special, and it's going to be directed by James Gunn, and he's going to film it alongside of Guardians of the Galaxy three, which means it'll film this summer. So, okay. um, 
All right. So, and then there's also uh, I Am Groot series of short films starring Groot. So they're going to be. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh... If you're Disney Plus, uh, when Disney Plus first came out uh, last year, they actually had a few rock animated Rocket and Groot shorts that they had on there. It was just like, you know, mm-hmm. small little. <laughs> and they used to they'd attach them to some of the other uh, animated shows. You know, you, you click play, like, what is this? And it'd come up with a Rocket and Groot animated short. So oh, if, it's right. all, if it's in those veins, I, I'm pretty excited about it. But, okay, I'll take this next group, and then you do the animated and Pixar projects. How about that? All right, sure. Okay. So, as Warner Brothers, we saw a fallout this week from the Warner Brothers announcement last week, how uh, not only is it, the movie theater chains coming out against them on this decision to go all streaming, but now it's their directors and their stars, right? Because <clears throat> there's a lot of projects that are were had profit sharing deals, right? Right. So, yeah. How do you show profit on something that you can't show profit on? Right. It's going straight. And one of the big ones is Lionsgate is actually looking to sue Warner Brothers because. They had a two hundred uh, was a two hundred million dollar offer for Kong versus Netflix had given an offer for Kong versus Godzilla. Right. Warner Brothers blocked that so they could put it on HBO Max with no clear payment for for uh, you know legendary was legendary pictures yes yeah, legendary pictures sorry not, not landscape legendary pictures mm-hmm. so no clear payment for them because it was a profit sharing project right got it. And there's no way to show profit on HBO Max release. So, and they just blocked them from a two hundred million dollar payday, right? Yeah, which would have been still been a loss, but it would have been two hundred million dollars more than what you know. What are they getting now? So, yeah. they're 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 taking a the corner on that. But I bring all that up to say that Disney did not make that same mistake by coming out and go. While they did do really heavy release towards streaming service, it's a lot of stuff that wasn't going into theaters anyway, right? Right, yeah. And the stuff, the big tentpole movies are still planned for theaters this year. They said they're going to leave it open kind of thing, but for right now, everything's set for theatrical release, right? So Black Widow, Eternals, all those movies that are set to come out this year are still going to come out in theaters, right? Yep. Uh, on top of that, they announced several more new movies on top of that, including uh, the one I'm really excited about, yeah. Is uh, Patty Jenkins directed Star Wars movie Rogue Squadron, right? So, and I gotta say, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna caveat this. I'm excited about this as long as Wedge Antilles is in this. Right? Well, here's here's what I'm thinking. Um, Even if he's the old like yeah. former Rogue Squadron, like he's the commander that sends them out on missions or whatever. Yeah, because he was care, in, as long as he's in it. He was in Episode Nine, so if you set this. As a as a post episode nine yep. series where they're rebuilding Rogue Squadron. Yep. Um, so you've got no background. You don't have to worry about the stories that happened in the extended universe. Yeah. Um, you can just tell all new stories, um, and you have Wedge as like the senior guy who's pulling them all back together. And you know, like I said, it could be just handing out the missions. Although he flew in that last battle. Yeah, he so. flew in the last one. So yeah. And some. Uh, Somebody else was, uh, again, I think this may have been Eckhart's Ladder, but I'm not sure. I watched a few people talking about this. Um, this would also be a good uh, excuse to bring back Poe. That's true. Poe po Dameron survives the whole, you know, episode nine. So, and yeah. he kind of got, sh- he and uh, Finn both kind of got short shrift in those movies. They didn't, although, you know, obviously he got shorted because he was supposed to die in the first one. And kind of clogged things up because everybody liked him so much. But this would be a good way to uh, try to take him back. They, they confirmed, or they, they said it was going to be forward from episode nine. So, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If she doesn't make it obvious in her little trailer, right? Yeah. You know, anything about it other than her motivations for doing it, which I think are cool. Yeah. So I, think I, I awesome. like that idea that. where it's all about. It's going to be about fighter pilots and about dog fights and stuff like that you know mm-hmm. it's not <clears throat> necessarily like a political story or it's an action adventure like yeah you're gonna be primarily in their x-wings not like 
oh, we fly the X-Wing to where we have the actual adventure. You know, no, it's about being in an X-Wing. Yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. I'm so, excited. Yeah, I'm excited about that. It looks, I'm excited that, you know, Patty Jenkins is directing it, so that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, they made a big point to point out she's the first uh, female director of a Star Wars movie. So. We'll okay. See. Oh, yeah, of a movie. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, good. I mean, yeah. <laughs> exactly. There weren't a lot of. There weren't a lot of them. Yeah, there weren't a lot of the directors, more. but, you yeah. know. Uh, they also announced uh, the new Ant Man and Wasp movie is called Quantum Mania. Uh, it's officially in development. Peyton Reed will come back to direct. Uh, and Quantum Mania will also introduce uh, Jonathan Majors as Kang the Conqueror, one of the Marvel's biggest villains. Which I think is funny that they have one of Marvel's most powerful villains show up in a Ant Man in a comedy movie. movie in a comedy Ant Man movie, right? So yeah, I mean I like Ant Man. Don't get me wrong. I like uh, you know. I just thought it was funny. Kang is going to make his mean, appearance there. Yeah, it doesn't mean he's the major villain. Right. Either. Right. True. Um, it because, just could just be a way to introduce him to go forward as the next the big Avengers bad, bad guy. For the next, yeah. You know, for the next build, build up to team up. <laughs> right. So. So, yeah. I, I'm excited about that. Um, I'm excited about anyone named Majors starting a, a movie. <laughs> I'm excited about that. Yeah. Um, but the big announcement, the one that drew the most attention, had the least amount of information about it, was they finally announced Fantastic Four, right, with John, with John Watts directing. So, straight from Spider-Man over to Fantastic Four, uh, Marvel's first family is coming back. And we thought about it, we're like, we were talking about it before, we're like, well, maybe they're just going to introduce the characters, or maybe what, you know, are they going to have their own movie? Well, nope, they're getting their own movie. So... That's announced. Interesting. Nothing else about it, right? Other than the logo, about, logo for it. Um, so everyone's excited about that. Finally. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's yeah. interesting. I'm. Uh, how you feel about this, Doug? Nah, I've never been a giant Fantastic Four fan. I like all of the characters, and I like the Fantastic Four being in the Marvel universe but i never really cared for their comic books they they the never <laughs> they never really seemed to fit in modern comic books because they were very much a yeah a, a pulp sci-fi kind of you know fantastical science kind of thing where it was like far less realistic and you know um so i you know it never really caught with me because it was more of a I don't even know, know how to say it. Yeah, it was more of like reading a science fiction book in comic form Yeah, rather than the rest of the Marvel Universe which is an adventure you know, it's got drama and you know, suspense yeah. and whatnot. The characters are great. I like it, the characters. Yeah. It's just one of those like, well The stories know. always seemed a little boring. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I liked. So. I didn't collect Fantastic Four, but if there was ever a character I liked, you know, I collect like story arcs. Some of them, right? Um, like when, uh, what is it? This time when like Reed Richards thought he was, like uh, thought he purposely mutated the Fantastic oh, right. Four, right? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, well, I would because Doctor Doom changed his notes in his giant diary, and he's like, well, that was something that would I logically do if <laughs> the way it was argument was made. And so he yeah. started doubting himself. So that was a great story, right? There was story. There was great moments like that. But I got to agree with you. I didn't like that, and it was my least favorite of like the uh, Ultimates line when they redid it in Ultimates. Oh so, yeah, it was actually pretty bad. It in was Ult bad. The Ultimates yeah. line. Uh, yeah, uh, Charlie Day was like the Shrunken City in Quantum Realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where they're gonna find him. They're gonna find. It's gonna be. It's that's totally. They're. Gonna, it's got. I don't know if he's gonna be the main bad guy, but they're gonna like basically get his attention. In whatever they're doing. Oh, yeah. In that movie. Mm -hmm. I ain't man. Uh, okay. Go ahead, Doug. Let's, let's tell us about the animation and Pixar projects. Yeah, all right. So we got a bunch of Pixar and live action, all kinds of weird stuff going on here. So there, we found out that Raya and the Last Dragon, which we've known about for a while, is going to premiere on March 5th, 2021 on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. Uh, and I've heard... I mean, we have here via premier, premier access and in theaters. However, I heard that I heard from somebody from another um, source that 
there was going to be no charge for it. So I'm not sure what the what the deal there is. Um, and I, I again, I didn't get to see all of the investor things, so I don't know what the exact wording they use. So I may have to go back and look at that again. Check it but anyway, out. March 5th, apparently both on Disney Plus and in theaters. Yeah. But that seems kind of doubtful because I don't think theaters going to be open March 5th. Yeah. I don't think enough of the vaccine is going to be around for theaters to be able to operate quite at quite. Yeah, we'll see what happens well, there. Yeah, we'll see. Um, then we're going to get a Baymax series based on Big Hero 6. Um, or at least that character from Big Hero 6. So yep. that's going to be in early 2022. So we got a little ways to write for that. It's funny. They're announcing a lot of stuff that's 2022 and beyond yeah. in this. So they you know, kind of gotten way out ahead of stuff. Uh, we're going to get Zootopia Plus, a new series based on Zootopia, also in spring of 2022. Um, that sounds cool. I like Zootopia. It's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, Tiana, based on The Princess and the Frog, it will be premiering on Disney Plus in 2023. And then these are all series. Um, then there's going to be a long form musical comedy series for Moana hitting Disney <laughs> Plus in 2023, which is cool. I like Yeah. It. Hopefully, hopefully, that means we're going to get The Rock back. No, um, because <laughs> man, he was hilarious in that movie. Yeah, I loved he was it. Good in that. Um, then we've got Encanto. I may not be saying that right, but Spanish for Enchanted, a new movie set in Colombia with music written by Lin Manuel Miranda. It's just in development. We don't know anything more about it, but apparently, it's about a family living in Colombia who uses magic, all except for the like the youngest daughter is non magical. So it'll probably be you know, her struggles or whatever. Right. And then Iwaju, a lo- an original long form series made in partnership with Kugali media uh, is premiering on Disney plus in 2022. I heard an interesting story about this. Apparently there was some sort of comic that this is based on that. One of the Disney creative um, vice presidents said, Wow. That looks like it would compete directly with us. Let's see if we can, you know, buy them out or get them on board or whatever. So they they co-opted them rather than compete against them. <laughs> nice. I don't know nice. the the whole background on that, but it's set. Um, you know, this is like uh, an African company, Kugali Media, uh, and it's going to have some sort of African origins, and you know, probably I don't know much about it if it's i heard it was something about like african myths or something like that that'd be so cool. it'll be interesting to see it's all on disney plus so i'm gonna watch all this stuff yeah yeah true <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, uh, i agree yeah. Tango. that's what i'm excited about the lin-manuel miranda one yes yeah um i it, there, I think Raya and the Last Dragon is the one I'm least interested in of all of these that have been li- listed. But they all sound interesting. Yeah, if they're on Disney yeah. Plus, we're all going to watch them. Says. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no reason not to. So. Yeah. Uh, all right, we got some Pixar movies too coming up. Am I hitting those as well? You hit those, and I'll hit the other projects. Okay. Pixar movies. There's some cool ones. Uh, well, okay. There's one cool one and two. It could be interesting. So the first one is. <laughs> Luca, a movie set in Italy about a boy named Luca. Uh, we don't know much much about it. Uh, it's going to hit theaters <laughs> in June 2021. That sounds riveting. Uh, yeah, it, Italian boy named Luca. It's a Italian boy living in like in a little village, and with nothing more. I'm like, uh, and it's, I mean, there's it's not Pixar, even a, so you know there's got to be more. Yeah. So there, right? I mean, there's it's not gonna even make a, cry. Big a hick. It's gonna... <laughs> yeah, there's not this big a hook as like when we heard about. Soul, or um, when we right. heard about Coco, they gave us a little more on, you know, okay, and it's about this. This kid right. about doing this. Yeah, so we got nothing, though. Um, this I'm gonna next one, I'm not sure about. I'm not sure I'm gonna switch about the, it. I'm going to switch the order here. Okay. I want to talk about that one last. Yeah. The next one is called Turning Red. It's about a 13 year old go- girl going through puberty that transforms into a giant red panda when she gets excited. <laughs> Uh, Which, all right. So sounds, movie. sounds weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's Pixar. Let's, uh, yeah, so. See how that goes. I mean, I would have 
I wasn't all that interested in um, Inside Out until I watched it. And then until I you like, watched oh. it, and then it was, yeah. It was all right, really yeah, this is good. So. <laughs> this yeah, next one, man, I don't know how I feel about it. i got to be honest all right, with you. I, um, the next one is Lightyear, an origin story for Buzz Lightyear, hitting theaters in summer 2022. The hitch is it's going to be um, Buzz Lightyear will be voiced by Chris Evans. Well, here's the hitch. Alan. It's two hitches, really, right? One, we're not going to have Tim Allen as voice in Buzz Lightyear, which is, to mm-hmm. me, insane, except for the second hitch, which I'm sure not sure I feel about. This is going to be a story about <clears throat> the actual Buzz Lightyear. So if there's a fictional character that the toy is based on, this is the story about that fictional character that the toy Buzz Lightyear that we used to is based on. Yeah. So it's not the Buzz we know. That's a toy based right. on this guy who is also a fictional character, right? Yeah. Right. But, but it's about him. So it's like a fiction story inside of a fiction story. It's like Inception here. We got... Well, come uh, on. I mean... Think about um, Woody was based on the character from that rodeo roundup or whatever it was that was like a show that mm-hmm. led to his toy that we learned about in what was it, That's Toy Story 2? So, but that was Tom would... Hanks. What's that? <laughs> that was Tom Hanks, though. This is about. Right. So they're going to play this, like, from what I understand, right? They're going to play this, like, it's. Like, it would be a cartoon that the toy's based on. Right, <clears throat> but it's going to be played like the cartoon world is real, right? So it's not going to exist in the world where they play with the toys of this cartoon. It's going to be a yeah. movie about that cartoon that we already had a real world movie that the toys were based on. It's just weird. It's kind See, of like a weird. This sounds better than uh, you know than the idea of having a Buzz Lightyear origin story that was a toy because then it goes against the logic of the universe which is he thinks he's the space ranger the actual buzz, just yeah. the toy. so so he would never have had a background prior to that to <laughs> to, to exist you know to to tell so yeah right so anyways i it sounds interesting <clears throat> so how do you feel about chris i mean i love chris evans well, here's how do you the feel about him point. not voicing about Tim Allen not voicing Buzz Lightyear? I'm it once I thought it was weird until I realized. Well, this is an origin story about you know the character prior the character prior to what we see. So it, and his probably and his it's his career as a space ranger before the point he he is in, as a toy. So you need a younger voice than Tim Allen, who's 20 years older than he was when he first yeah. voiced Buzz Lightyear. So, right. <clears throat> um, so it, it makes sense. The same. <laughs> well, man. Fair enough. I mean, I love Chris Evans. I love Pixar. I love Buzz Lightyear. <clears throat> I want to check this movie out, right? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, all yeah. right. Anyways. So, we have a couple other uh, projects of note. And again, I'm going to put these out of order as well. We, so we have... actually, we missed one here. Oh. Did we? Uh, yeah, you didn't talk about the Taika Waititi Star Wars was confirmed here as well. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. So the Taika it was, Waititi Star yeah. Wars was confirmed. Yeah. We, we don't we know anything know. about it. Yeah, nothing but, about it, but it is confirmed. Yeah. And I think it, the fact that it exists. Yeah, that that's going to exist is is crazy enough. Yeah. Okay, so for the other projects, a note here, we're going to talk. Um, we're gonna I'm gonna put these out of order as well. Um, okay. Disney's making a, uh, a a new Disney Plus spinoff movie starring the Weasel character from uh, the, the Weasel Buck from the Ice Age Adventures. Yeah. So it's called Buck Wild, and it's going to be starring Simon Pegg as the voice of Buck. So we got that. Uh, we have an interesting one. We have two uh, National Geographic series coming out. One starring Will Smith and one starring Chris Hemsworth. And uh, the... Smith, the, the Will Smith one is called Welcome to Earth. It follows Will Smith as he embarks on an awe-inspiring journey to unlock the secrets of the planet's most extraordinary and unexplained phenomena. And the Chris Hemsworth one is called Limitless, and it explores the limits of the human body, which 
Sky it sounds Chandler. interesting. Like it's going to do like you know, like the experiments where they were testing how many G's a human body could sustain yeah. and things like that. So yeah, it'll be, be interesting, cool. especially if Chris Hemsworth is doing all those experiments. Like throw him in an airplane. <laughs> 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 Maybe who knows? Yeah, we'll see. But the one that's got me, I don't know. I don't excited is the word or interested or. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm, I know I'm going to check it out. Hopeful. <laughs> it's got to be hopeful. Uh, this one is a show by Noah Hawley, and I love Noah Hawley, right? Uh, he was a showrunner for Fargo, which is an amazing series, by the way, if you haven't seen that. And Legion, which is an amazing series that I didn't watch when it first came out because I was like, Legion, why don't I watch a show about, you know, <laughs> Professor X's weird Goofy son. Goofy son, yeah. Goofy son. <laughs> but the series is crazy and you can tell Noah Hawley is a comics fan. He read that series in the comics, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and he put all that love for that comic into that series. So I'm a big fan of Noah Hawley. Big, big fan. He's making a new series based on the Alien movies for FX and Hulu. So an Alien series. Now, everything post-Aliens... <laughs> yeah. Uh, has, has been hit and miss. Hit and miss, yeah. There's a couple decent things, but mostly bad. But, uh, yeah, there hasn't been a good Aliens thing since then. And there hasn't been any of these post, any of these Predator vs. Alien things that were any good. So an Alien series, right? Now, the I'm, weird thing about yeah. this is it's set on Earth. Yeah, set on Earth. Well... Well, <laughs> we don't know if it's only set on Earth, but it is right. going to be on Earth. So, right. I think it'll be interesting if they play up the corporation, the yeah. um, what is Raylan Yutani, uh, Raylan -Yutani um, yeah. stuff, and <clears throat> make them seem like dirt balls, and you know maybe have like a kind of a what do you call it, um, Resident Evil kind of vibe where there's this like underground laboratory where they've managed to sneak an alien in there and then. It gets loose, and you've got this, you know, like whatever going on here. Yeah, there there, is, there are possibilities here. So. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, there's possibilities. So we'll see what happens there. But okay, uh, yeah, tons of news. I mean, come on, what? Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. I need to go through and watch all of it again. You know, it's watch like, all of it and finish. They're like, oh, uh, Warner Brothers, you're going to release 11 films on your streaming service. That's that's nice. Here. <laughs> We're almost releasing that many Marvel movies. Now, <laughs> seeing a lot of this is in 2022 and 2023, yeah. how mm -hmm. much of this do you think at the last minute they went, ah, we need to pump this up? We need to pump this up, yeah. And, because they're and, not releasing everything on... Because everyone expected... half People have expected them to come out and go, all right, they pull the Warner Brothers and go, okay, everything's going to Disney+. Plus." Yeah. Now, 80 out of the 100 things they announced is going to Disney+, Plus, but they pumped that up to... And made sure they pointed out the fact that they're still planning theatrical releases for their tentpole stuff, mm -hmm. right? I think I think we were right in that prediction we did it was last That's week, the week before, where movie theaters will be for tentpole movies. They'll yeah. be event things, and they won't be as many. Or of them. they'll be. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of kind of art house. Mm. Art house theaters that are like, oh, you know, these are the, you know, these are the again like art house movies. Um, you're gonna see that, and you're gonna yep. see big tent poles, and then sprinkled in probably in the holidays and stuff, the family films. Yeah, but other than that, you're not gonna see, you know, rom com number two, you know, you know, yeah. whatever, just weird, you know average like oh, we expect this movie to make 30 million dollars for us or something nope that's going on to a streaming service that's going streaming yep it's yeah. worth more <laughs> yeah. yeah they make a movie for 30 million dollars that's that's streaming bait right there yeah um okay so let's uh talk a little bit about we have a weird story the sad fall of monster hunter movie the monster hunter movie who dared to come out in theaters uh despite you know everything. They're like, oh, despite the tenant, they're like, oh, we're gonna push it out in theaters, because one of the main reasons they pushed out in theaters was because they expected to do big numbers in China, who's gone through a big opening of their movie theaters, right? So this was a highly anticipated movie in China. It was expected to do really well. It passed through all the uh, 
censorship testing and everything else. And it was one of the first movies to ever be pulled after being released. So it got two nights. Two nights. That's it. And then it was pulled. And it was done. And why was it pulled? <laughs> All right. We're going to dig deep into this crazy story here for the, the time, five minutes we got left here. But backlash uh, over what was deemed a racist joke, right? Which confused the studio, Phil, and the and the director, right? <laughs> they're like, we're going to recoup costs here. We're gonna, they're gonna, they're, we can't wait for this in China. They're like, wait, a racist joke? What? I didn't have any racist jokes in the movie. Yeah. What's going on? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> they what happened was, this is crazy. There's a scene in the movie where there's, I'm going to spoil anything for you. Don't worry, this movie's going to be on, you know... <laughs> Some kind of streaming service soon because it's tanked in the theaters. Uh, there's a scene where there's a couple soldiers in driving in a, in a jeep. One's white, one's Asian, right? Uh, and the Asian soldier says, "Hey, look at my knees." And so, what kind of knees are these? He says, and then answers his own questions. They're Chinese, right? <laughs> this is a stupid dad joke in this movie, <laughs> right? This is a harmless stupid dad joke. Check out my knees. They're Chinese. <laughs> well, it turns out, unbeknownst to the director, and I don't know who they hire for this, right? But uh, this harmless bad joke uh, <laughs> did not make sense when translated into, you know, into Chinese, right? Because knees and Chinese don't rhyme in, <laughs> in Chinese. Right. So it didn't make any sense. So the local company they got to translate the movie, uh, the dialogue... They've changed the dialogue to reference the Chinese colloquialism about how men have dignity and should not kneel kneel down easily, right? I think it goes, men have gold under their knees and only kneel to the heavens and their mother, right? The saying goes, a rough translation. Implying that any time a man kneels, it should be an occasion precious as gold, right? So, <laughs> that would make more sense to the audience. However, this is not how the Chinese viewers took this. They believed it was uh, the line in English was an insult aimed at Chinese people by implying that Chinese should kneel before Americans. Okay, <laughs> so so within hours, the hashtag Monster Hunter insults China was blowing up on on Weibo, which is China's social media app. Uh, meanwhile, viewer ratings grew increasingly lower as anger towards the film spread over those two days. And on the third day, they pulled it. They pulled it and decided and deemed it uh, unfit for release in China. So, man, how would you like to have the entire hope of your movie making any kind of money back on this horrible year we had being mm -hmm. pulled because you didn't pay close enough attention to who you had translate your yeah your dialogue, right? Especially when you just cut that scene. Yeah, just cut that scene. This is a horrible joke anyway, right? But no, they left it in, and uh, wow. <laughs> I'm like this a stupid joke in a movie cost them pretty much everything. Cost them everything. That wow. was their that was their chance at making any kind of money back on this. So Dang. Yeah. That's dumb. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Was, was that a series of unfortunate events, Doug, or was this just you know because usually they don't pay attention to that. I guess when they send movies out, they just hire a local company to translate, right? And they hire, right. you know, local actors to dub it or whatever. And uh, and they have this whole separate company that's based, you know, in doing that. So <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah, they did, Charlie Tango. They did. <laughs> so that's the sad, sad story of Monster Hunter, guys. So uh, real quickly is it here, really that sad because well, that know. movie. Just yeah, it didn't look dumb. We actually have a couple questions, real quick. If we want to answer, we want to answer them real quick. Uh, in our uh, vault, our mailbag, the Grizzled Geek mailbag, we have a question from We Weird Zero, or is that We Weirdo? I mean, it's a zero, but is it meant to be Weird Weirdo? We Weirdo. Okay. We Weirdo. Who knows? I don't know. Sure. We'll go with that. These kids nowadays. Uh, he says, sadly, I can't watch the live show, but I get to catch your show on iTunes uh, every week. So, hey, we do have iTunes listeners. Yay. Yay, so there's one. We know one. Uh, so happy to hear you mention Grizzled Weeb. Is there any chance of getting more anime reactions? Uh, well, that's a big question here. Right now, it's kind of uh, difficult, right? With scheduling and everything like that, we're going to kind of revisit yeah. things going forward and see where we are 
you know, coming into the new year. We'll see. I would like to. I think everybody involved would like to. It's a matter of getting yeah. time. Right now we're reacting to Mandalorian. We're reacting to Ruby. Yeah. Right. So we got. A and few if you things. go back into back into the depths of our um, catalog, we have mm -hmm. reacted to some uh, some older. Yeah, I think that's what he was talking about with the grizzle, the return of the grizzle weeb, because that's what we used to call that old show. And then oh, that's true. Yeah. Now her okay. new segment is grizzle weeb. Yeah, that's so. true. Um, yeah, if you maybe <laughs> it, we... <laughs> we hope we're gonna see Mandalorians on the last <laughs> couple more episodes, you, and then we got you count. Um... Do you count this uh, Star Wars Visions? Because we'll probably react to we'll, that. We'll react to that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be an anime style. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So we got our next one is from You Watching It Wrong. Or You Watching Wrong, I think is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he asked, uh, are we ever going to see the world famous Grizzle Geek Studio again? <laughs> Which well, is, for those of you new no listeners. Exists, so. Right, exactly. I was going to say, if you new listeners, we used to get record this together back when we could actually you know leave our houses I mean, and see people what you see in the background of mike's image is the essence of the set it's just <laughs> not behind a table we can all sit at right um so yeah and to be honest we've kind of determined during this whole thing that it is considerably easier to record this way it is <laughs> uh, it, while it is nice to get together and you know we do we have, we have regular D D games and stuff like that where Hopefully we'll get to back, get to back, yeah, get to be back together to do those. Actually, recording, it's a ton easier to just pull it up on the computer, turn on the webcam, and go, versus yeah. set up the studio and get all the mics in place and whatnot. So I do miss, I do miss the clapper though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Playing with that, but uh, we'll see. We might. We talked about. I mean, we're definitely probably going to do the podcast like we are now going mm -hmm. forward uh we'll see about any of the reaction stuff going forward we'll see how we do and what happens we are we talked about just getting together for like big event stuff like right? like maybe end yeah. of the season wrap up videos and stuff like yeah. that so we'll see just to uh let everybody know speaking of getting together for event stuff real quick before i know we're over an hour but it's okay uh we are coming up Fast and hard on our one millionth view, right? So we're yeah. gonna have to have come up on a million views. In fact, we are on track to hit that by February. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, go out, tell your friends, guys, <laughs> like and share. Let them know that we uh, come give us some views on any of our old videos, any videos we want. We're on uh, on track to hit a million views sometime in February. We were on track beginning of this year to hit it by the end of the year but yeah let's go know, back to that um, something happened question real quick mike what was the person who asked that last question you watching it wrong you watching wrong okay i would say if you want to see us react to more anime um make suggestions but be aware that we are kind of particular in anime like i am totally uninterested in watching slice of life anime <laughs> so if it's an anime about a girl a volleyball team or yeah. some kind of weird, you know, like kids at Shane's school. Wa Shane is watching one right now about rock climbing. Yeah, I'm all like, if it's like not competitive like, rock climbing in a high school. And I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> if there's no demons in that high school or whatever, <laughs> they're not. A, it's not a high school for superheroes or something. I don't care. I'm not. I don't see any tentacles. I'm not there. So, yeah. Um, no. <laughs> So if you wanted us to react to Fist of the North Star or Akira or something along those lines, I'm down for um, I wouldn't, you know, maybe maybe go back and do Ghost of the Shell or yeah. something like that. Um, That'd be cool. They have, uh, for me, all of that stuff has been so long ago. I only It'd have be like vague, reacting new again. <laughs> yeah, I only have vague impressions, and, and I would yeah. probably be excited. Like I remember that scene. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I remember that fountain of blood. Yeah, Fist of the North Star. Yeah, see? Rhinos. <laughs> so, yeah. Absolutely. We'll be down for that. So, uh, all right, guys. That's going to do it for us this week. A uh, couple things here. As always, we have our three links down below, which uh, Doug can tell you about because we actually got, got some masks. Look at that. Woo! You can find that in our Teespring store. Mm. Link down below. Yeah. 
That's nice. Oh, that one needs to be cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> Just inhale the big old breath of COVID. Yeah. Have no. A, no. No. Um, you'll also find a link to our Patreon, right? Um, which right now we're putting our Ruby episodes up early. Once things calm down, we're able to get more filling in. Then you know uh, we'll add more. Whatever stuff unedited there. Mando reactions up there too. Yeah, and then finally. The easiest way for you to support us is click that Amazon affiliate link and do your shopping through there. You know you're going to shop through Amazon. If you click that link and shop within 24 hours, we'll get a kickback from Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And that helps us out a lot. A lot of people have been doing that lately, and it's really, really helped yeah, out. We really appreciate it. Get us some of that Bezos money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> you don't need to support us. Get Bezos to support us. That's how we do it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, did we determine whether there's going to be a show next week? Uh, next week, yes. The week after, probably. The week after, not. no, because it's Christmas. Yes. Okay, so next week. We'll be back on the 18th, guys. Uh, and then we'll have a hiatus for the next two weeks. It'll be Christmas and New Year's, and we'll be back on the 8th. So the 18th and then the 8th. Yeah, but you can still see us reacting to Mandalorian during that time period. We'll still be reacting to the Mandalorian, guys, so... All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Thank you to all our new listeners out there in the podcast land. We really appreciate you, you know, even though you got to wait the extra two days to get the podcast. But yep. you can listen to us anytime. And make, help us get to that million views, guys. We'll get there earlier. We're going to do a special yeah. show. Come on over to YouTube. That. Come on over to YouTube and check us out. Help us get those million views in. All right, guys, thank you very much, and we'll see you next week, guys. Bye. Adios.